According to the website SaveTheRhino.org, one rhino is killed every eight hours in South Africa alone. The age crew have just arrived out at Tabamanzi Wildlife Services in Bela Bela to find out about how thermal camera technology can help aid in the fight against poaching. Let's find out more. We're chatting to Roy Alves, who is a business development manager at Access Communications. And you've just handed over three really awesome new thermal cameras to assist in the fight against rhino poaching. How do they work? Sure, they work very well. <laughs> I'm sure. So, if I can give you a bit of a brief in history here, this technology was being used by the military for many, many, many years. And up until about three or four years ago, it started filtering into the commercial space. So primarily being used for perimeter protection. Mm -hmm. So putting cameras on long range fences and being able to look for you know, intruders and, and particularly for heat signatures of a human being. Primarily. Right. Now, I'm guessing that you've worked out really smart technology around this unit. So how does it merge with software? So historically, again, it was all the video was being sent to a central control room. Where it was being, where we had some very clever software that was comparing the images from before and after mm -hmm. and then making the decision. Today, that software, all the analytics reside in the product. So now the cameras in the field are making the decision on whether it should alert an operator or you know, get a dog unit out in, into the field. Roy, I'm guessing that that really helps to speed up your reaction time too. Of course, of course. So you create, what you start doing, you start creating digital barriers with the camera. So if someone actually had to go and walk into that area or a vehicle stopped or someone was loitering, that would then send an alarm. So really being proactive, I think, is, is the mechanism. Mm. You know, when people are over the fence and they're inside the facility, it's too late. You kind of want to catch them prior to them getting inside the, the facilities. It is really special just having a brief encounter with a rhino today. What does it mean to you to be aiding with this technology? So from an access perspective, it's really doing our little bit for the community more than anything. I think we all have a sort of a joint role to play in making sure that these animals sustain and they survive, that one day our kids and you know future generations can appreciate the species. So using the technology, we believe that really we're making a difference. Are you looking into any other smart technology for any other animals? Well, I mean, it, it, we, we're talking about rhinos today, but it could be used in any sort of perimeter monitoring. So any sort of high value premises could be, could be protected. Um, what we're seeing as well is they have the ability to look long distances and I think this is a big hindrance with normal optical cameras. You know, normal optical cameras are going to really only see things in the field of view. With a thermal camera you're looking down a long stretch of fence and you're able to look for distinct, distinct heat signatures. Mm. Whereas in the past with the optic cameras if you had rain or snow or mist, fog or fire, your visual was limited. With this technology you're able to see much further. So really you could be protecting any sort of any, anything from behind a perimeter wall. Roy, just how smart is this unit? So it's really cool. We've got the ability to record on the camera. It's got an SD card slot, which allows all the video material to actually be stored on the camera. So besides all the analytical intelligence where we can go and make some analytical decisions on if there's someone intruding or not, we're able to keep that video residing on the camera. Mm. And it sounds trivial to us now, but when you're putting cameras out in the field, generally the obstacle is getting the video from the camera to the control room. So by having that ability now, it really raises its innovation, I would say. So another feature which is really cool is the ability to have these cameras situated over a grass or a large area. And if there were poachers that weren't captured in the scene in terms of the visual, but they walked over the grass, what it does is it actually leaves a heat signature in the ground. So it's quite simple then to go and see which direction they walked off and if they were walking towards you or further away, which I think is really, really, really clever. Another feature we find which works very well is in many instances when you install a camera, there's generally a blind spot somewhere around the camera. It could be below the pole or just behind the pole or you know where the camera isn't seeing. So you've got the ability then to stick an eye, uh, output passive or some triggering event that could then connect to the camera and let the camera know that although I don't have the visual, I'm able to pick up that there's something else that's happening around the camera. That's one scenario. Or another scenario could be listening on the audio microphone. So in many instances when you put a camera up, you've got a microphone that's sitting there. Mm. So if there's a gunshot or someone screaming or some noise, it would actually trigger the camera. So you don't have the visual, but I'm picking up a change in audio, which is really clever. Incredible, such a smarty pants. But I want to know how does all of this really help assemble
actionable information that can be put out there in public. So, I mean, it's really making it easy for the man in the street, I would say. So if you look in, in South Africa, we, we don't want really to have rocket scientists sitting looking at cameras. So you want the cameras to make the decisions for you. So only send me interesting information that is pertinent and proactive, then bring, bring it to my attention. So you don't want this maze of screens, rather tell me the cameras that are being, that have been affected and let me know about them. Thank you, Roy. We love your goodwill and we really love your amazing thermal camera too. We'll be back with more after this. Before we go though, let's check in at HTXT Africa for another hot tech tip. Now, back to the rhinos. We're checking in with Carl Thornton, who is the team leader at Pit Track, and his buddy old pal and extension of the team, Diego. Your demo was really incredible, and it must be a lot of work to have to coordinate the manpower and the technology now, too. Yeah, the manpower and technology, I think, uh, definitely part and part. Uh, from the operator's side, we need to be uh, based by early warning systems. Uh, the thermal cameras uh, obviously bring that early warning system to us, and uh, that gives us an early, like a proactive, a solution to poaching and it's the proactive solutions that we want because it's those solutions that prevent the actual slaughter of those animals and allow us to catch the poachers before they actually get to the to the animals themselves. How excited are you with the latest edition? Uh, very excited. Uh, knowing that my guys can now see in the dark, I think um, that is ultimate. As far as anti-poaching goes, uh, with uh, what we're uh, operating without the cameras, uh, really leaves us at, at a disadvantage. Uh, we also find the poaching syndicates also operating with uh, similar night vision and thermal equipment, uh, which obviously gives them the upper lead and the advantage, them being able to see us at night and us not being able to see them. So with the new help of the thermal cameras, we can balance the scales in technologies and uh, we can bring on the war, you know? I love the fact that you've still kept your canine friends. So now, technically, you're just merging the two worlds. How important is it to still have that balance? Uh, very important. Um, the cameras can give you the visual and the early warning, um, early warning of approach from poachers and so forth. But without the quick reaction force on the ground to react to that footage, none of them stand alone. United they stand and uh, with the two of them together and as a combined uh, entity, it's a proactive solution and it works. It's been tested and proven and uh, works very efficiently. I have to say that having the opportunity to meet and greet with the rhino today really changed my heart in terms of the awareness and how in danger these animals are right now. What can we do more of to help you? What needs to be done is uh, no one individually can solve this problem. Uh, the only way that I foresee a, a, a long-term solution is to unite all the corporates, to unite the public, to unite all the anti-poaching units and organizations, uh, SAP and Army, and for everyone to unite the fight and stand together and protect our national heritage. Carl, tell me a little bit about how important and technology's role is in conservation? I think uh, technology is definitely um, very, very important in conservation. And uh, it's proven that conventional uh, anti-poaching methods are insufficient. Um, hence the statistics of our rhinos and the situations that we're facing. Um, together with technology, um, technology brings a proactive system into anti-poaching. Conventional, old conventional systems of anti-poaching were more reactive, um, responding on kill sites and uh, breach and perimeter but uh, often finding dead animals and holes in perimeters where techn what technology brings is a proactive system. It brings early warning to the approaching poachers and uh, early, with the early warning we can uh, react accordingly and we can actually capture these poachers before they commit the crime. So what technology brings is a proactive solution to anti-poaching. Well Carl, I definitely get that the buzzword here is proactive. Definitely. With uh, proactive solutions we've still got animals. You know, with reactive solutions it's uh, it's a loss of an animal, so proactive is the way forward. Copy that. Thank you so much for chatting to us, Carl and Diego. 